Hajime Kashimo, the Thunder God. 400 years ago, Hajime Kashimo reigned over the Edo period, being arguably the strongest sorcerer to inhabit this era. As Hajime Kashimo sits upon a stool, his head bent over due to boredom and disappointment due to decimating all who challenged him. He came to ask, what is the purpose of such strength? As he's at a complete loss of depression, since he cannot find the answer, he's approached by Kenjaku, who informs him of a man who rivals him in strength. But this will not satisfy Kashimo. Kashimo wants to understand what it truly means to be the strongest, and to understand the greater purpose behind the strength that he's been gifted, and an equal cannot provide him with such an answer. And so he asks, who is the strongest sorcerer you know? And Kenjaku states that it's Ryomen Sukuna, and none even come close to him. Kashimo then accepts Kenjaku's offer for the clone game, reincarnating into the present as one of history's strongest sorcerers and dominating this event. The clone game is a massive event within the Jujutsu Kaisen universe that functions as a lethal battle royale where players will kill one another with Jujutsu for the sake of earning points. In this battle royale, players must fight across 10 colonies for the sake of obtaining points and using them to either gain an advantage over their opponents or find an exit route for the game. It also hosts many other monsters on top of the verse, such as Yuta Okotsu. The sorcerer is said to be the next Gojo and capable of defeating another special grade sorcerer, Suguru Geto. Real Ishiguri, the man that Kenjaku himself considered to be Kashimo's equal in terms of strength, and another man who stood unparalleled within the Edo period. And Hakari Kenji, the unkillable sorcerer, seated to be someone who will surpass Gojo one day, and the man who is coming for Kashimo's head. Before our heroes enter the killing game, they find out that Hajime Kashimo is the first to obtain 200 points, meaning that he was the first to clear out at least 40 sorcerers. Kashimo uses these points to add the first new rule to the coin game. This rule, allowing every player within the game to have access to information on other players. Kashimo had set this rule in order to locate Sukuna easier, but it doesn't do him much good. Hakari Kinji, the strongest sorcerer of the hero side, declares that he'll be entering the coin game for the sake of targeting Kashimo's points. And at that moment, the stage had been set for the two monsters to collide. The next time we see Hajime Kashimo is in his first fight against Panda. Panda, being one of the five sorcerers to be recommended for grade one before the Shibuya incident, is a strong indicator of his power as a sorcerer and indicates that at the very least, he's capable of defeating a special grade curse. The moment that Kashimo identifies Panda as a player, he instantly dashes in and speed blitzes it, punching a hole through base Panda before he can even react. Panda remarks that Kashimo's attacks are not only extremely fast, but heavy as well, and this is when Kashimo's special physical specifications are explained. It's said that the cursed energy that Kashimo possesses has the same properties as electricity, and due to this, his body is always electrified. Or in other words, you cannot defend against Kashimo's normal attacks since the damage travels through you as if it were a current. And this is when Panda responds by engaging Kashimo in his gorilla mode. And in this mode, Panda can do exactly what Kashimo is doing with the shockwaves of his attack. But when Panda hits Kashimo, it does absolutely nothing to him. Kashimo is able to eat an attack that ignores durability and tear off that same arm that just hit him with no time to spare. And as Panda goes in for another attack, Kashimo releases a flurry of punches, completely overwhelming the grade 1 level sorcerer. Panda attempts one last attack by transforming into his rhinoceros state and charging at Kashimo, but then we see Kashimo's signature technique. With Kashimo's electric curse energy, he's able to create the separation of positive and negative charges. And as Kashimo strikes his opponent, he transfers the positive charges into them while accumulating the negative charges and preventing them from moving within his body. In the moment that he releases these negative charges, they shoot toward the positive charges contained in his opponent, resulting in a thunderbolt. This attack will never miss. The bolt of lightning obliterates Panda, leaving nothing but his head and this is when Hakari bursts onto the scene. Hakari Kenji's grade as a sorcerer isn't specified, but he certainly is powerful as some of the special grades in the series, and if not, more. As one of the Heian era's strongest sorcerers has referred to Hakari as a monster, he is certainly one of Jujutsu Kaisen's strongest characters, and Kashimo's first truly worthy opponent within the Kohen game, a potential answer to what he seeks. Kashimo and Hakari begin their fight with a relatively equal back and forth, and due to Hakari having his own special curse energy trait, Kashimo comes to find out that his normal strikes will not have the same effect on Hakari that they typically do on other characters such as Panda. They have a relatively close back and forth with Hakari taking the edge the longer the battle goes on 
due to his ability to enter his jackpot state. This state allowing Hakari to have an infinite amount of cursed energy. And the benefits that come along with infinite cursed energy is Hakari being able to use his max output in every strike, never run out of cursed energy, or in other words, infinite stamina, and to endlessly heal his damage at the fastest speed in the entire series. Being able to heal an entire arm before other characters can even perceive that it's been healed. Kashimo being able to handle Hakari at his peak, meanwhile not even utilizing his cursed technique is a testament to his title as the strongest sorcerer within the Edo period. As Hakari casts his domain once more, he fights Kashimo without jackpot, and this is when Kashimo completely decimates Hakari, knocking him out multiple times within the domain before he was able to roll another jackpot and end the domain sequence. Hakari activates his jackpot once more, and they continue to fight. Eventually, Hakari's jackpot state runs out once more, and he's able to deal a heavy blow on Kashimo, but this is how Kashimo sets him up. Kashimo displays that he's able to use his signature technique to not only transfer bolts of lightning to his opponents, but to make his staff return to him at lightning speeds. But he doesn't do this without making sure that Hakari's in between him and his staff. The staff then bolts through Hakari and explodes his stomach. Hakari opens his domain once more and catches one last jackpot state to finish up the battle. As the opponents end up in the sea due to Hakari changing his coordinates, he kicks Kashimo into the water, making his cursed energy completely release itself into the ocean due to it having the properties of electricity. And although it seems like his checkmate, Kashimo is quite the con artist. Kashimo creates chlorine gas by performing electrolysis on the seawater, poisoning Hakari and making him drown. This being another way to handle characters with high regenerative capabilities, but even that can't keep Hakari down. Kashimo then uses the rest of his cursed energy to end the battle by creating a steam explosion, but loses due to Hakari reinforcing his entire body with a binding vow. However, Hakari does not accept his victory over Kashimo because Kashimo was holding back against Hakari by not using his cursed technique, but Kashimo states that he will only use his cursed technique against Sukuna and the opportunity for this comes after Sukuna defeats Gojo in the battle of the strongest and the thunder god bolts in for battle against the devil above the heavens. Kashimo arrives onto the battlefield and the opportunity to acquire the answers he spent his entire existence seeking is now before him. He bombards Sukuna with many questions as to how he's obtained satisfaction with his life as the strongest in history and Sukuna does not pay these questions in much mind as his intelligence is far beyond pondering things of this nature any longer. As Kashimo beckons Sukuna to enlighten him with the answer to his strength and solitude, Sukuna tells him that he will bestow this lesson and to give him his best shot. Kashimo wastes no time in activating his cursed technique for the first time, this technique being the Mythic Beast Amber. This cursed technique is a transformation for Kashimo's body that allows his body to surpass the limits of mankind, massively enhancing his speed and strength, but not only that, it allows him to render any phenomena that can be created by electricity as another weapon in his arsenal. When Kashimo enters this state, he completely overwhelms his weakened Sukuna, and although Sukuna is weakened here, it is still Ryomen Sukuna at 20 fingers. As Kashimo quite easily kills his weakened Sukuna, it forces Sukuna to reobtain his original transcended body due to the fulfillment of a binding vow, and Kashimo begins to use his x-ray vision to analyze his opponent. He cannot see any flaws nothing less than perfection. What Kashimo faces now is a Sukuna with the ability to chant incantations and techniques simultaneously with no hindrance or strain to his normal bodily functions, an unparalleled being, and yet he engages battle anyways. Sukuna essentially bullies him with space cutting dismantles, the same attack that killed Gojo himself, the strongest sorcerer of the modern era. As Kashimo is killed by this attack, he has one final dialogue with Sukuna one that informs him of what it means to be the strongest, and how he was able to fulfill all of his opponent's wishes through accepting their challenge in a way that Sukuna did in this battle. But Sukuna says something very important that indicates Kashimo's insanely high strength, and Sukuna says that he will toy with those that interest him. And we've seen Sukuna toy with every single one of his opponents. Sukuna used space ripping dismantles to toy with Kashimo, whereas he used his hands for mostly screwing around with anybody else. In a way, Kashimo was certainly impressive against Sukuna, despite how fast Sukuna defeated him. And this was a Kashimo fighting against a Sukuna that destroyed army single-handedly alone. Not the Sukunas that everybody else has had the pleasure of fighting before him. When it comes down to it, as of chapter 245 of Jujutsu Kaisen, 
nobody has done as well as Kashimo did against this Sukuna alone. Whereas other characters need teams and groups of monsters to be able to even contend with this Sukuna. Kashimo being able to even react to and dodge a space cutting dismantle despite being given a warning is still an insane feat. With this, Kashimo sits comfortably in the top 3 of the strongest characters in the series. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Thank you so much for always watching. Uh, with that being said, I will catch you on the next one. Peace out.